Good morning, and welcome to worship at Tremont United Methodist Church. This morning, I just want to start with a couple of announcements. If you would be sure and sign that attendance pad, and also uh, fill out any prayer requests that you might have, um, we'll be sure to get, take those and to pray for you. Also, you can continue to give by sending uh, your um, tithing to the church, or you can also give online. Just to let you know that our offices will close um, on December the 23rd, and then we will reopen again on January the 4th. In the meanwhile, if you have an emergency, you can call Pastor Larry's cell phone, and you'll see that on your screen. But that number is 815-324-2893. Per guidance of our bishop, we will not meet in person for worship on January the 3rd or the 10th. But we will make an announcement soon um, about future Sundays. As we know, we will let you know. All in-person ministry continues to be paused at this time. But also to let you know that the front door of the church is always unlocked uh, for food donations for our local food pantry. And we do thank you for all of your donations. We appreciate that. So before we worship, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty Father, we thank you for joining us in this time. We thank you for your presence in the midst of wherever we are gathered. We offer this worship unto you, Lord. May it be pleasing unto you. Take it and shape it and mold it, Lord, into something that is pleasing unto you. We offer everything we have in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us sing together.
us upon wings like eagles from everlasting to everlasting God you are everlasting Let us affirm our faith together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, and we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Must have been surprised at where this road had taken him. He's never in a million lives, but he had dreamed of Bethlehem. And standing at the manger, he saw with his own eyes. Message from the angel come alive. And Joseph said, Why me? I'm just a simple man of trade. Why with all the rulers in the world? Why me? Inside the stable filled with hay. Why? 
just an ordinary girl I'm not one to second guess what angels have to say But this is such a strange way to save the world To think of how it could have been If Jesus had come as he deserved There would have been no bad no lowly shepherds at his birth But Joseph knew the reason Love had to reach so far And as he held the Savior in his arms He must have thought, why me? Just a simple man of trade Why? the rulers in the world why here inside the stable filled with hay why she did an ordinary girl I'm not one to second guess what angels have to say but this is such a strange Save the world I'm not one to second guess What angels have to say But this is such a strange way To save the world this is such a strange way, such a strange way, a strange way to save the world. We have an opportunity now to go to the Lord in prayer, and before we get started, Let's all just take a moment to help ourselves get centered, to center our heart, to clear our, our mind, and to focus on the one to whom we pray, which is the Christ. Let us pray together. Eternal God, we come to you this morning after we've celebrated your birth. All the presents have been opened, food has been eaten, celebrations have come to an end. And yet here we are, Lord, longing for your presence still. We celebrated and it just seems to be like, now what happens? What, what do we do now in the mundane middle? How do we live? Who do we rely on? We celebrate Emmanuel, God with us. And we are reminded that is, that is not just for one day or for one season in our life. But as we celebrate that, we celebrate the fact that that happens all year long. You are with us, which is why you came. So we would never feel alone so that we could lean into you for guidance. Offer all of our prayers and our concerns to you as we are doing now. You are with us on Christmas. You are with us today. You will be with us in the future. You will never leave us or forsake us. And so we claim that promise today as we stand in the middle between the already and the not yet. We thank you, Lord, for coming to us, for that you are even mindful of who we are. And so this day, Lord, we, we think of those who have asked for prayer requests, various reasons, health issues, uh, financial issues, broken relationships. The list is long. We give each and every one of them over to you. 
We lay them at your feet. We know, God, that we can pray, but we know we can't solve these issues. They're bigger than we are, but as we bring them to you, we know that you are greater than any issue that we have, that you are looking out for us, involved in our lives, helping us, holding us, guiding us, and giving us direction. We stand in amazement and in awe of, of how great you are, Lord, and how much you love us. It's, it's our hope. It's what we cling to. It's what we hold on to. So we thank you for the many blessings that we have, have sensed during this season. And we hold on to those blessings as we look towards the new year. Help us to stay in the peace and the joy, and the love, and the hope that you bring to us. May we share that with others you place in our path. We pray these things in the name of Jesus, who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture passage this morning is taken from Luke chapter 2, verses 22 through 40. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, which was a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. So guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what cust was customary under the law, Simeon took this child in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother, they were amazed at what was being said about him. And then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, this child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that it will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed. And a sword will pierce your own soul, too. Also, there was a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of a tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but she worshiped there and with fasting and prayer day and night. At that moment she came, she began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Israel. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. So that's our scripture for today. But what is today? Today is December 27th, at least that's what the calendar says. And that's all good and fine, but we just kind of find ourselves in the middle. 
Last Sunday, we were still prepping for the birth of Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. We were still in that mode of anticipation and excitement. And next Sunday, we'll be looking forward to a brand new year, anticipating the hope of renewal and healing from this crazy, challenging year behind us. But today, today, we're just stuck in the middle. <laughs> We're looking for Jesus in that mundane, ordinary, run-of-the-mill middle. We long to know that Jesus is in our midst while we wait here in the middle. So before we begin, before we begin to look at this scripture of so long ago, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we, we just praise you for meeting us right here today, around our kitchen tables and our living rooms, right here in, in the middle, Lord, of, of big praises that we, we've sang, celebrated, and as we look forward to the new year, Lord, be with us now in the middle. Help us to know that your presence is with us. Help us to hear you in this scripture and apply these truths to our life. Give us hope in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so we just celebrated Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. So we celebrated that Jesus was fully God and fully man. Both things are true, but Jesus also he was a Jew, and because of his Jewish heritage, Mary and Joseph were obligated to follow many of those ceremonial laws that required a trip to the temple in Jerusalem several times. It is at the temple that this particular Bible story takes place, right in the middle, right in the mundane, ordinary, run-of-the-mill middle of people's lives. But you see, I believe that the ordinary middle, the ordinary part of the story makes this story extraordinary. But just what was going on? Well, we know Jesus was the firstborn male to Mother Mary and Father Joseph. And in order to fulfill the law that God gave through his servant Moses, Jesus was to be presented to the Lord in the temple. So our story begins with Mary, Joseph, and baby Jesus approaching said temple. Just inside the temple gate, there was a man named Simeon. He was told by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death until he would see the Lord's Messiah. That was his dream. So he waited at the temple every day. He waited in the midst of his ordinary life, day in and day out. He waited and he waited. But while he waited, he practiced spiritual disciplines to prepare himself to see the Messiah. Verse 25 describes Simeon as righteous and very devout. So what does devout mean? Devout means that he was committed. He was training his senses. He was aware of the one to whom he belonged, and he prepared every day of his life by reading scripture, memorizing the word, and allowing that word to take root in his heart, and he waited and he waited. He kept his eye on the crowds, knowing that the Messiah would come to the temple according to tradition to be presented to the Lord. Now, we can just imagine Simeon waiting near the entrance to the temple and watching parents bring their firstborn sons to present them to the Lord. And can't you just imagine Simeon standing there saying each time, Is this the one, God? Could this be the one? Now, to understand the magnificence of this event in the midst of the ordinary routine, you just have to get a feel for what it was like to go to the temple. The temple in first century Jerusalem, it was a busy place. It consisted of 35 acres of buildings and open courts. And as I mentioned before, the Jews had many ceremonial laws that required a trip to the temple. So there was constant activity chaos at its finest. 
It was very, very loud with all the noises from all the animals, and it was very, very smelly from all the animals. That filled the air as well. Who knows how many parents brought their firstborn baby boys into the temple on the day that Mary and Joseph presented Jesus to the Lord. To the rest of the people in the temple, Mary, Joseph, and baby Jesus, just another part of the chaos, just another baby coming, just another day in the mundane middle. But when Simeon saw Mary and Joseph enter with baby Jesus, Simeon knew this child is different. He is the one. And I have a question. How did Simeon pick Jesus out in this chaotic crowd? How did Simeon recognize the redemption, consolation, salvation, and hope for all the nations? How did he do it? I believe it was because Simeon, as he was waiting, in the midst of the mundane he was preparing himself to recognize Jesus. He wasn't idle in his waiting. He was intentional to learn of his nature, study his word, and allow it to be a part of who he was. When Mary and Joseph arrived at the temple, Simeon, now a very old man, recognized Jesus as the Messiah. He took the child up into his arms and he praised God saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all people, a light for revelation of the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. At that moment, the Messiah was in the midst of the mundane, and Simeon was able to hold and proclaim this long-expected Jesus who was born to set the people free from fear and sin. In verse 36, we read about the prophetess Anna. She, too, chose to live her everyday mundane life at the temple. Year after year, Anna continued in prayer and intercession for the nation of Israel. And according to scripture, she even stayed at the temple during the night. And although many people did not understand why, they respected her. And they realized that the spirit of grace was about the way she lived her life. The spirit of grace had to be upon her. And similar to Simeon, she was familiar with the scriptures. She prayed day and night. She listened to the Lord, and she too waited and she waited. Anna was firm in her convictions. She was guided by the prophetic gifts she had received as a young child, and she prayed and she fasted as God directed her. And in turn, the Lord knew that her body was a well-prepared vessel, and it could be trusted, and it was fit for the master's use. So early one morning, in her 84th year of life, as she was preparing for yet another mundane, ordinary day, she heard the voice of Simeon in the temple. You see, Anna would have known Simeon. They spent their life at the temple. She knew he was devout and a godly man, and Anna also knew that he was waiting for the Messiah. So Anna stayed in the background watching as Simeon stood with a young couple and began to prophesy over their baby. So Anna asked herself under her breath, could this really be the one? And watching Simeon from afar, she began to approach this young couple with a baby. We read her story in verse 38. At that moment, Anna came, and she began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Israel. In so many ways, he looked just like an ordinary baby, and yet he was speaking to her, saying, I am the bread of life. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the true vine. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am no ordinary baby. But Anna knew that the baby was Emmanuel, and that God was with her right there in the midst of the mundane. Although Simeon and Anna, they were very old, 
They had never lost their hope and conviction of the promise made to them of the coming Messiah. Led by the Holy Spirit, they were among the first to bear witness to Jesus. And they began immediately to proclaim that Jesus was God's agent of salvation to all people. The prophetess Anna and Simeon were two people who prepared to see a promise fulfilled by intentionally looking for Jesus in their midst. And then, after finding Jesus, they shared their blessing, and their lives became a witness to others who perhaps had lost hope. So that's the story. But here's my question. Why didn't all those other people who were gathered in the temple, why didn't they recognize Jesus? Scripture makes no mention about anyone else recognizing the Savior who was right in their midst. Why did Simeon and Anna have to witness to all these people? Well, I believe if you look at the Scripture, you find the answer in verse 38. Let's look at that again together. At that moment, she came, meaning Anna, and began to praise God and speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. Others were looking at Jesus, but did not recognize the Messiah in their midst. They were looking, but they could not identify him as Savior. The crowd in the temple didn't recognize Jesus, but they did recognize Simeon and Anna who would live their lives of devotion and which made them sensitive to God's presence. Since the Jews had made many trips to the temple for their various ceremonial traditions, no doubt they saw Simeon and Anna there at the temple waiting. You see that the key is the Lord used Simeon and Anna to witness to those who were looking for Jesus but could not see him right in their midst. Friends, today we're in the middle. We're in that mundane middle of our everyday lives, and all of us, each one of us, need to know that Jesus is among us. We all need to claim that promise in Scripture, Hebrews 13, 5 and 6, I will never leave you or forsake you. The Lord is my helper, and I will not be afraid. Some of us can identify with Simeon and Anna. We recognize Jesus in our midst. We gain strength. We gain comfort. We gain guidance in his presence. But others of us are looking for Jesus in our midst, but because of brokenness and illness or sin, we can't see him. And it's in those moments that we need a Simeon or an Anna type of person, a Simeon or Anna type of witness to point us to hope, to point us, to offer us just a glimmer of hope in the midst of the darkness, in the midst of the mundane middle. You see, I think we feel like God's presence can only be felt in those big mountaintop moments in our lives when all is calm, all is right with the world, when the test comes back clear and all the bills are paid, when the relationship is healed and the car is running without any issue, no doubt he's there. And those moments, yes, they need to be celebrated. But Jesus is also present with us in the mundane, everyday routine of our lives, present many times as a still, small voice offering us guidance, but we can't feel it and we can't see it because of our pain. Simeon and Anna, they waited many years for that promised Messiah to arrive, and they used their time of waiting wisely, never knowing when Jesus would come. Their example should be a catalyst for each one of us today in 2020, because although we just celebrated the birth of Jesus, we live in the time of the already and the not yet. Jesus has already arrived 2,000 years ago, but he's coming back. And Matthew describes his second coming like this. But about that day and hour, no one knows. Neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the day of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. 
For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and they were drinking, they were marrying and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field, one will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together, one will be taken and one will be left. So keep awake, therefore, for you do not know of what day your Lord is coming, but understand this. If the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake, and he would not have left his house to be broken into. Therefore, you all must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected time. Like Simeon and Anna, we're all instructed to be ready. Like Simeon and Anna, we can pray and fast and continue to grow close to God. Simeon and Anna only had the Torah, the first five books of the scripture, to study and to memorize. But today, in 2020, we have the whole book. We have the opportunity to learn of God's nature, to allow him to love us through his words, to grow deeper in relationship with him. So while we wait in this mundane middle, while we seek God's face, do we have any instruction about how we can wait? Well, we can read Paul's words in Romans chapter 12, and this is from the message. Paul writes, so here's what I want you all to do, God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary, mundane life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embrace what God does for you. It's the best thing you can do for him, and do not become so well-adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, Fix your attention on God. You will be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. And Paul finishes by saying, I'm speaking to you out of deep gratitude for all that God has done for me, and especially as I have responsibilities in relation to you. Living then as every one of you in pure grace, it's important that you not misinterpret yourselves as people who are bringing this goodness to God. No, God brings it to you. The only accurate way to understand ourselves is by what God is and what God does for us, not by what we are and what we do for him. Yes, today we find ourselves in the mundane middle, but we are not alone. God sees us. God hears us. God cares for us. God holds us. God is with us in our midst. It is well with our souls. Let us pray. Father, for the reminder of this scripture from Anna and Simeon, we have an opportunity, we have really an invitation to as we wait for you to come again, to grow deeper in knowledge of who you are, and who you're calling us to be, to not just wait in complacency, but to wait with intentionality, to seek you. Your scripture tells us that if we seek you, we will find you. And so give us the perseverance, Lord, to run the race so we can see you and we can continue to have things to be well with our soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. When peace is like a river Attendeth my way When sorrows like sea billows roll Whatever my life 
Thou hast taught me to say It is well, it is well with my soul It is well, it is well with my soul It is well, it is well with my soul. Though Satan should bind, though trials should come, let this blessed assurance control. That Christ has regarded my helpless estate and has shed his own blood for my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul, with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. My sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin, not in part, but the whole. is nailed to the cross and I bear it no more praise the Lord praise the Lord oh my soul it is well it is well with my soul with my soul it is well, it is well with my soul. And Lord, haste the day when the earth shall be sighed. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. Trump shall resound and the Lord shall descend even so it is well with my soul it is well it is well with my soul with my soul it is well, it is well with my soul. As you go about your life today after this film ends, I, I just know that if many of you feel like I do, I'm so anxious on Sunday morning to watch the service and I watch the service and I feel enlightened by the word and enlightened by the music and then it has to get shut off. And then I think, now what? As we live in this space between the already and the not yet, we're all living in the now what? What do we do now? What do we do when the celebration is over? What do we do in our mundane middle? We have the promises and every word that Jesus ever spoke available to us every day. My prayer and my challenge to all of you is, Seek the Lord. He can be found. Take up the challenge. Learn from Anna and Simeon to recognize Jesus in our midst. Please allow him to love you. Go in peace. Amen. Mm -hmm.